So this is the final jump instruction and it's called jump if. So the instruction is given by 0101 and it will jump to an address which is contained in the next address of the RAM only if one of these flags is set. So these flags come from the ALU. So this is a carry flag, the A is greater than B, A is equal to B and the zero. So it will only jump if one of these is set, but we've got 16 possibilities here. So we could say that, for example, the first one here, well, the first one would be no jump, but the second one here would be it would jump if the zero flag was set in the ALU. And this one here would jump if the equal flag was set within the ALU. And this would jump if the equal flag was set or the zero flag was set. So if we worked all the way down, all the way down to the bottom here, we would have jump CAEZ. So that'll jump if the carry flag set or the A is greater than B or A is equal to B or the zero is set. So really we're saying here, this jump command is, it jumps if these are set to an address which is given by the contents of the next byte of the RAM. So we can see here that this jump if, it's really associated with the ALU instruction because you'll go through an ALU instruction and after the LU instruction, one of these flags will be set. If it's set, then it will jump to the contents of, it will jump to an address which is given by the contents of the next memory location in the RAM. So let's go ahead and we'll see how we're going to build this in Logisim. So if you go to the resources section, you'll see there's a file called jump if instruction. So if you go there and open that up, and then go down to CPU. Then you'll see we've got our CPU here. So let's kind of have a look at that in some more detail. So you can see here that we have the CPU that we've seen over the last few videos. It's got all the same components. But in this instance here, we have this extra component here. And this is the very last register that we're going to add in. And this is the flag register. Now, whenever we do this jump if, we're going to make a comparison. So we're going to see whether the, any of these are set. So we're interested in whether the carry out is set, the A larger, the equal is set, or the zero is set. But now, in order to do that, we have to have gone through an ALU instruction. So at a particular point of an ALU instruction, one of these would potentially go high. Now, after the ALU instruction is complete, we want to go and do the jump if instruction. But that means that the information that was here previously will now have passed on and it would have gone out of the accumulator. So we need to be able to go and take a little copy, a little snapshot of these values whenever we go through this ALU instruction. And we do that here with this register. So all we do is we store these bits of information in four bits here in this register. And we set the information in that register from some point here. Now, exactly where do we set this information? Well, we want to set the information in this register depending on something to do with the ALU instruction. So somewhere within the ALU instruction, whenever we have actually worked out a, an answer and just stuck it in the accumulator, at that point, we want to be able to take a little copy of it. So in order to do that, we'll have to go back and have a look at the ALU instruction and find a place where we can take this output from. So we're going to do that just in a second, but first of all, we'll have a little look inside this here. So all that is is just our four bits. And you can see that's our latch there. So let's go ahead, first of all, and we'll go and see where we're going to get this set bit from the ALU instruction. So if you go to the resources section of uh, this video, I've put a copy of the ALU instruction file 
down there just for convenience. So you can go and open that up if you like. And then if you get into CPU, and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. So what we want to do is we'll get into the control section here. So this is our control section. We don't need to see all of it. We can just see this. This is fine for us at the moment. But what we want to be able to do is we want to make sure that we can take a copy of the flags and the ALU at the right point. Now the point that we want to take this copy is whenever the accumulator gets set and the ALU, the accumulator gets set. So whenever that accumulator gets set, what we can do is we could take a little output here and we can connect a pin onto it. So it'd be an output pin. there and that would be our set pin. So we could take this output here and we could fade it into our little flag register and it will take a copy of the flags from the ALU at the right point in time. So I never put this in originally because we hadn't talked about any of the flags. So if you go back down to the resources section and open up the jump if instruction again and then come down to CPU So let's just jump into the control section first of all, and we'll have a little look to see how this is going to work. So this is our control section here. And you see I've stripped away the stuff that we're not interested in, so we're just left with the jump if instruction. So you can see here at the bottom, we have our, our carry, we've got our A is greater, we've got our equal, and we've got our Z coming in. And those are coming in, and they're going through these AND gates here, and then through an OR gate. Now these AND gates here, the other pin of these AND gates are connected to the first four bits. So this is going to be our, our carry, our A, our E and our Z for these four bits. So we can put in our code for our jump if. So that's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. So at 0, 1, 0, 1, we can see here that it goes through our 3 by 8 decoder. We've now working our way down this set of AND gates, so we've got down to this AND gate here, and this AND gate comes up, and it's going to get into three other AND gates, so it's going to get into this one here, and this one, and this one, and these three here are going to be connected to the steppers at step points four, five, and six. So whenever this stepper comes along here and hits point four, we're going to make this line live, and it's going to do this instru a instruction address register enable, memory address register set and accumulator set and also it's going to put one on to this uh, bus here and then we've got the next line 5 which co covers this line here and then the line 6 covers this covers this line here okay so there's a few things here for us to work through so let's go ahead and we'll work through and we'll see how this provides the jump if So let's pick a particular one of these we're going to set high. So let's say we're going to set the zero high. So you can see here the zero gets set high here. And if we were to have the zero set high in the instruction, there you can see that that zero is going to be passing straight through here. And as we said, it's either the carry or the A is greater or A is equal or the zero. So that's the OR gate for each of those possibilities and those all go to this third AND gate here. So let's go up and first of all we'll just talk our way through the first step here. So let's say we get to step four. When we get to step four we can see that this bus is going to go high. Now the reason for the bus going high is we want to put another one onto the instruction address register because we know that whenever we work through this process four, five and six and we get back to the beginning again we want the instruction address register to point to the next instruction. But the next instruction, um, the, the next point in the RAM is going to contain the data for this jump if instruction. And that data, in effect, is the actual address that we want us to jump to. So we don't want to pick up that particular uh, byte as the next um, instruction because it isn't that's the data from the previous instruction okay so we need to add one on 
in order to ensure that the next time we come round, we're actually pointing at the next, the, the proper address in RAM. So it's really down to the fact that this jump instruction is going to be two bytes long. There's going to be the uh, instruction and then the data. So also we can see here that the existing contents of the instruction address register are going to be enabled on to the bus and then they're going to get into the memory address register so that we're pointing to the f the um, first address in the in the RAM okay and also the accumulator is going to be set so we're setting the accumulator with this new bus val this new value here um, so really that point there again is just getting ahead of the game as far as the next uh, fetch cycle is concerned. So let's go on to step number five. So when we go to stage five here, we can see that this line here is going to go live. So this is going live. So it means that the contents of the accumulator are going to be enabled on to the bus. So remember the accumulator is going to contain the address of the next instruction. So we had added one on, so we jumped over the data bit by, from the previous instruction, we're now on to the next instruction. So if there isn't going to be any uh, jump if, then all happen is this value for this address here will just head out to the instruction address register, ready to jump on to the next instruction. But now when we jump on to stage number five, number six, sorry, this is when we're going to make the choice so the choice is going to be, do we just jump on to the next instruction or do we jump somewhere else? And this is the jump somewhere else bit and this is a choice that's been made. So let's go and have a look at that just now. So now if we're at stage six, then this line here will be live. Now if we come down to the other two inputs to this AND gate, we can see that one of them here comes from the carry or the a is larger equal or z so this is the flags so one of them comes from the flags now if it turns out that none of the flags are set so if they're all zero then we're just going to get a zero coming out here in that case here that there's not going to be any output to this AND gate so that means that the instruction address register is going to be determined by this line here which is the accumulator enable so that would just be telling us that there is no flags have been set, therefore just continue to the next instruction. Okay, but if it turns out that one of the flags, say for, the, for example, the zero flag had been set, then it's going to jump if that zero flag is set. So if the zero flag is set, that goes high. That means that is high, that's high, and we're at stage six, so that's gone high. So that means that the output is here is now high. So that means that the, the feed in from this OR gate won't come from this point here. It's going to come from this point here, which is the next address of the RAM, which contains the address that you're actually wanting to jump to. So in that instance there then, what goes on to the instruction address register isn't the value for that accumulator, it's going to be the value that's in the RAM, which is the next address in the RAM. So that's in effect the choice being made at that point there. Do we, does the instruction address register contain the instruction for the next data instruction from accumulator or does it contain the value from the next place within the RAM? Okay, so that's the choice that's been made and whenever this zero goes high, it's going to come from the RAM. So the next address within the RAM will contain the place that you actually want to jump to. So let's go up to the top level and we'll see this working. So let's put in our instruction. So it's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. And let's say that the zero has been set. So that's a zero there. Now let's say also that we're going to be jumping to memory location 15. So now we'll work through this. Nothing will happen for the first 12. And on the 12th one, 
you'll see here that we had this bus one goes high because we know it's a jump if and we know we're going to have to be potentially pointing to not the next place within the RAM which contains the data we want to point to the one address beyond that okay which contains the next instruction so also you can see here that the value of the instruction address register has been enabled which is zero and we're going to go to the next clock pulse which will set that into the memory address register also that value for the accumulator has been the one has been passed down through here so now it's sitting in this accumulator so really whenever we work through the next steps the choice is going to be do we load up the instruction address register with the address that's in this accumulator or do we load up the instruction address register from the next byte within the RAM and that's the choice we're just about to make so if we head on to make get the next position so we go up to our clock is now enabled we can head back down in here and we can see we're on this position here so at position number five we can say here that the accumulator has been enabled with the new value and it's just sitting there and whenever the clock set comes along it will get passed to the instruction address register so let's go up to the top and whenever we go to the clock set there so that's the new value there which would be position one okay is now passed on to that instruction address register so it's sitting in there and as far as the instruction address register as register is concerned that's the next instruction that we're going to use so let's look inside the control section for the choice so right now we're sitting in stage five and we can see here that the instruction address register is getting its value from the accumulator but whenever we go on to stage number six what can happen is this can be overwritten so instead of the instruction address reg register getting its value from the accumulator it can get its value from the RAM it, it only gets value from the RAM if one of these gets set high okay so if any one of these gets set high the four bits so the carry the A is greater the equal and the zero any of those go high this point goes high this point goes high therefore the value in the instruction address register will actually come from the RAM so that gives a good indication as to how we make the choice between the value that's in the instruction address register coming from the accumulator or the RAM but you'll note here that there's a little red line so red lines should be warnings because that's really an error now I can't show you the full simulation run all the way through to stage six because when we jump to stage six the way it's set up at the moment we're actually trying to change two things at once and Logisim's not happy with that so you might be saying well does that mean the design doesn't work well no the design works perfectly well but because I've had to disconnect sections here in order to put inputs in to try and show you how the thing works in doing so we're not able to run through the entire simulation but once it's all connected up then you will be able to see it working and it will work perfectly well but because it's a kind of chicken and egg here at the moment I'm taking away sections of the control section so that you can make it it makes it easier to understand each little part of the instruction set but in doing so in some of the simulations and I'm not able to show you every single part of it okay but you will see it working once it's all built together so the main thing to take out of this video is really the in the control section here being able to where understand where we've made the choice so now there's one other little factor we've got to take care of here so we're back at the top level here and you'll see I've actually changed this a little bit I've shifted this register down a little bit here and we've got an extra couple of gates here so there's a there's a gate here and there's a little in here it's just a little one bit memory now there's a reason for putting that in and that is that if we were to look at the carry 
out here, but generally what would happen is to carry out, we just go through our little one bit of memory and then it would just feed back into the carry in. So in effect, carry out just goes back to carry in. But there was a problem with this. And the problem is, is that whenever we go through every single instruction, we're always going to be adding one on to this at this point here for the bus. So we add one on in order to ensure that we point to the next instruction. But in that process of adding one on in order to get to the next instruction, we're not actually interested in this carry in. We're only interested in the carry in whenever we're performing an ALU function. So this is a possibility of having an extra one coming in here during this fetch cycle. So instead of adding one on, we could potentially add two on. So that would give us an error. So in order to prevent that from happening, we've got this little AND gate in. So now in order for the carry in here to go high, it'll only go high whenever we're performing an ALU instruction and it'll only go high at a particular point. And the point's going to be given by this input here, which is at the stage five of the ALU instruction. So really at the sta same stage as this flag set instruction, which we talked about just a minute ago. So whenever this goes high, it tells us that we're at the right point of the ALU instruction. And at that point there, then we can look at the carry in and we can use the carry in. But we won't be otherwise, uh, we won't be interested in the carry in and that carry in will be low. So it means that we don't have the potential of adding an extra one on whenever we do the fetch cycle. So that's one problem, but we run into a second problem as well. And that's what this little registers for. So let's go and talk about that now. So I've added a little temporary memory location here just to save the value of the carry. Now we've done that because we want to make sure that we've got the correct carry. And if we were to take a copy of the carry at stage four of the ALU, now we can get stage four of the ALU by connecting to this temp line because it goes high at stage four. So if we take a copy of that, then we know when we get to stage five, of that ALU instruction, we indeed have the right carry value available to us. If we didn't have this, then there's a potential for that carry value to change. And if it changed, then we would be feeding in the wrong carry value. So this is really just added for a little timing issue. So that's the last of our jump instructions. There's only one more instruction to work through and it's going to be an easy short one and we'll get to that on the next video. So thank you for listening and goodbye.